friends, this is not the church I joined. It's not the church I joined two and a half years ago when my family moved here. It's not the church we walked into. While there's some familiar faces, it's not the same people that we met. This is not the same church. My very first sermon, nobody's going to remember it, but I will, was we are asking God to work in, through, and around us. I'm going to tell you guys, God has worked in us. He has worked in us, drawing us closer to Him. He has worked through us. Some of you are here because somebody that was worked through has brought you here. Some of you have had life change and experiences of of who God is, and it has all changed because God has been working through members of this church. And God is working around us. We have had new opportunities and doors opening in this community and in the lives of those people that we love and care about happening all the time. God is working in, through, and around us, and He is changing us. This is not the church I joined, and I am excited to see where we're going. But I'm not the only one. I want to take a few minutes, and we have a testimony from Brittany um, that is going to be shared on the screen, allowing her to share some of her thoughts about how God has moved over the last few years. Doing uh, both in you and around you and even through you. Um, this isn't the church I joined, friends. God is growing us. He is growing us. He is growing us in our faith, in believing that He can and that He will. He is growing us in, in our faith in some practical ways where every year when we set a budget, we go, this is beyond what, I, what we saw last year. It's beyond what I really feel comfortable with, but there has to be a space for God to step in. God is growing us in our faith as we are seeing people take seriously following Jesus here and there and everywhere they go. God is deepening and growing us in our trust. God, we can only go down these paths if you go with us. We cannot do it alone. And so we have, uh, we've put on events that we didn't know if anybody was going to show up. But believing this is what will serve our community and will help people. We have taken steps of trust and faith, believing that, hey, if, if we have this conversation, God can work in it. We have grown in our expectations of God. When I came, our first few weeks or so, If a guest showed up, we were just surprised. We were excited. We didn't have any way to get their information. And so we have created cards, and we have created assimilation strategies, and we have created things so that, because we believe that this is a place where every single person, no matter your age, no matter your color, no matter your social standing, no matter your history, every single person can know and follow Jesus better if they're a part of this place. We believe it. And we expect God to send people that we get to equip and that we get to disciple and we get to be an impact in their life. I know that very practical things have changed and grown in our church. One of my favorite quotes I've heard or one of my favorite statements I've heard is a person who said, our Bibles now move during the week. As a pastor, there's nothing more than you want to hear. All I do is stand up here on Sundays and go, pay attention to God, please. He's amazing. Our Bibles move during the week. Prayer life has changed here. I know God has worked on my heart and has brought me to a place of, Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you. But he has brought many of you to that place. And the prayers of our people are felt by those who need them. As many people have told me over the last year, I could feel the church praying for me. 
we, we have grown in our love for one another. As I sat at the bedside of Joanne Porter this summer many times, she would tell me every single time, she says, Jordan, the people of our church are different. They love one another. They care about one another. Before, I was just an associate with, but I know they care about me. They're reaching out to me. They're praying for me. They're calling me. They're visiting me. People I didn't know a year and a half ago have been to my place every single day or four times this week. Our love for one another has changed. And our love for our community has changed. God has grown us a heart to reach people. We've ripped down signs that say First Baptist Church members only, and we've said, come on in. Come and be a part. Come and use our space because it is for you and for this community because we have a message that we hope to share with you, but we want you to be here so that we can share it. And it has changed our hope. God has grown our hope. Things that we thought were so far out of the realm of possibilities. God has shown up and shown out. And we've been able to celebrate. I was in the home of a member last month who said, I was in the camp that we should sell the building and just throw in the towel and go find somewhere else to worship. They weren't the only one. But they, they told me, though, later they said, but God has shown me over and over and over again that he's not finished here, even though I thought he may be that he still has a plan for this place, that he has bigger and better dreams for this location, for this place, for this community, and we get to be a part of it. God is growing us, church, as people, as a community, and in this community. I can hear it. I can see it. I can feel it. God is growing us. But I don't just want to celebrate anecdotes. See, we can celebrate data here. Small churches have the tendency to want to celebrate anecdotes because it's hard to look at the data. But I want us to look at both the personal understandings and I want us to look at the, what the data says. And here's the line I want you to know. Every metric of church health and church growth is trending positively here at First Baptist Farmers Branch. Every metric of church health and church growth is trending positively. Positively, Does that mean that we are a massive church? No. But we are taking healthy steps daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly to be what God is developing us to be. So here's some data I want you to see. The first one we have is our new members. From 2018, 2019, 2020, we did not have a new member join this church. 2021, we had two people join in the last quarter. In the last two years, we've had 37 plus people join this church, believing in what God is doing. In the last two years, we've had 11, and I counted Ken, so you're in on that count, buddy. You got a pastor count every once in a while things, right? We've had 11 baptisms. Half of those have been adults. Uh, let's see, what's the next slide that we have? Our average attendance. As you can see in 2020, yes, there was COVID, but yes, we were also an aging congregation and we were losing many legacy members. We had declined to about 44 people on a Sunday morning. But as you can see, over the last two years, as we have been following God and trusting God, you can see that there has been a rise in our attendance. And last week on Labor Day weekend, 93 people were here at church. Friends, this is something we can celebrate. Do I have any more slides? No, I don't. Oh, yes, giving. Giving, I have a slide of that. I don't get to see it on that back wall when it's like this, so sorry. Given what, what we receive, the generous gifts of you faithful members and attenders is in blue and our expenses is in red. As you can see, we were aimed in the wrong direction. The reason we were considering do we close the doors is because we didn't know how much longer we were going to be able to keep the doors open. But God has begun to work, and he has shown himself as he changes hearts. 
as he has brought new people and he has brought some of these people that have been existing with us for many years to a place of, I believe in what's happening. I want to be a part of it. I want to support it. And as you can see, we have had a surplus the last two years in our giving. Every metric of church health is pointing positively. Vacation Bible school around here was hard work and people poured in so much effort and it would, it would serve the kids of this church and maybe the grandkids of church members. And over the last two years, we have seen 70 and last year, 90 people come to be a part of our Vacation Bible School. We have seen families coming to church through that ministry opportunity. A church that was once seen as no chance with, the, with families because of maybe our history it is now, he's just the promised church, he's just going to grab something. Nobody needs to worry. I wasn't worried, so that's... I want to communicate that out loud so everybody's good. Uh, nobody else has tried that, though, right? Uh, a church that was once seen as a place that people would be afraid to bring their kids is now a place where people desire to bring their kids because they know that we will love them and we will minister to them and we will help them. Friends, a place that was seen as combative to the city, who was against City Hall, <laughs> has opened their doors to the city. We hosted the Branch Connection. We have a volleyball practice here weekly. During the winter, we have uh, basketball practice. We have CPR classes going on twice a week. We have funerals for a local funeral home that is happening two to three times a week in this building. Friends, our whole view in this community is changing. In two weeks, the city has invited us to celebrate what First Baptist is doing and to thank us for our openness in the city. And they want us to come to the council meeting so that they can honor us and encourage us in that. Friends, things are changing. One of my favorite statistics to share about our church is that every decade of people has joined our church in the last two years. A person from every decade has joined our church in the last two years. Why is that important? Because this just isn't a church for people who are my age, who look like me, act like me, or anything like that. This is a church for people that are in their 80s, their 70s, 60s, 50s, 40s, 30s, teens, 20s, and whatever's below teens. We are a church for all. And I believe that we are ready now, as we have ever been, to disciple whoever walks into our doors and to help them know and follow Jesus better. Let's read some verses. John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. Jesus is in the upper room. He's washed the disciples' feet. He's told them that he is the only way to eternal life. He will then institute the Lord's Supper in a little bit. But then he says, I want you to know this, because I'm soon to be leaving. And they're like, please don't go. We don't know where you're going and how are we going to get there. He says, I I'll take care of that. But he says, I want you to know this. John 15, verses 4 and 5, Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Verse 5. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I just gave you a bunch of data. I gave you a bunch of anecdotes. I gave you a bunch of information to celebrate. But here's what I need you to know. None of this happened. None of this happens except for God is working. Friends, we are living in the promises of God right now. We are living in the scriptures where Jesus says, if you abide in me, if you remain in me, if you are obedient with me, if you allow me to lead, if you will take me serious and, and remain with me, then I will bring fruit. 
And friends, we have celebrated fruit. But I believe it's because we've abided in Him. I believe it's because we have taken seriously His Word. I believe it is because we have taken seriously prayer. I believe it's because we have taken seriously His worship. And we have taken seriously His Lordship. And we celebrate. Not that we could produce this fruit, but that He has. He has brought lives, He has changed lives, and He is using lives to lead others. Friends, we are living in the promises of God. We must remain obedient and faithful. We must remain obedient and faithful because obedience and faithfulness is where God works. That's us corporately, and that's you personally. Remaining obedient and faithful. Now, we, uh, we do have much to celebrate, but I also want to remind you that there are challenges both in our midst now that we have walked through and that we will walk through. There is going to be a temptation on every single person in this room to get comfortable and to get complacent. To go, hey, we're not worried about paying our bills anymore. We can just slow down and relax. This is the church we know. I'm here because I believe God has bigger and better dreams than even we have for this church. That he wants to do more in this community. That he loves our neighbors, our friends, and our co-workers more than we ever can and more than we ever will. He is not finished. And so we must fight against the temptation to go, we can relax. Bills are being paid. Staff is doing the work. Things are happening we must not grow complacent. We must not grow comfortable. We must not take our foot off the gas because why? As we said last week, heaven and hell exist. And we have to care about people's eternities. I'll leave a verse for us. This is kind of our guiding verse, maybe for the whole year. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says this, And let us not grow weary of doing good. Friends, we can watch a video and say, yeah, things are great. We can look at data and go, yeah, things are great. Let us not grow weary of doing good. As, uh, as John writes to the church of Ephesus, I believe, you, lose, you lost your first love. May that not be said of us. What happens if we do not grow weary in doing good? In due season, we will reap if we do not give up. If we do not give up, we will reap. Verse 10, so then, as you have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, especially those who are in the household of faith. Friends, as we have a state of the church address, I want to bring to you the challenges. The challenges of growing complacent and growing comfortable, the challenges of, oh, they'll take care of it. I don't know if you noticed in the slide that had our attendance, there was a dip. There was a dip in the spring. I'll tell you that I felt over the last year my own self getting to a place of, okay, can we take a break? Can we take a breath? Can we slow down? We just got comfortable. Oh, well, there'll be enough people here. We'll be able to pay off all the bills. Uh, we can just not do those things. But God jolted me in mid to late March of this year and said, Jordan, you need to wake up. You need to get up. You need to continue to do what I've called you here to do and not grow complacent. And maybe for you, you're in the same boat. Maybe you were on our replant team, or maybe you were on a search team, or maybe you've been serving and you go, I can just step away finally. Friends, let us not grow weary in doing good. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is the one who does the work. We are just called to be faithful to him in it. Let us not grow weary. We exist because of so many legacy members of this church who believed God was not finished. We are standing here today because of so many legacy members of this church who believe that God still wanted to use First Baptist. 
Some of those legacy members are in this room right now. And if you're in this room, I just say thank you. Thank you for believing against what the data said. Thank you for believing against what you were feeling. Thank you for believing that God could and would work in a place like this. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for being committed. Thank you for giving. Thank you for showing up. Even when it was things you didn't want to do. Especially when this new pastor had all these different ideas and you were like, I don't think that's going to work. Some of them didn't. You were right. Some of them I was right. But God has been there. There's also many legacy members of this church who are unable to be here. Maybe due to age, maybe due to sickness, and maybe even due to death. But we stand on their shoulders. We've been given the head start because of their faithfulness, because of their commitment, because of their generosity, because of their own abiding with God. And so church, for some of you, especially those of you who are new, which probably accounts for 50% or more of people in this room right now, it's time for you to step up. It's time for you to step in. It's time for you to start pulling up the slack. It's time for you to stop just sitting on the sidelines and start playing on the court. It's time for you to say, I'm here, what can I do? It's time for you to be regular in your attendance. It's time for you to be regular in your service. It's time for you to be regular in your prayer for this place. It's time for you to be regular in your giving to this place. Because you believe and you have been experiencing the change, it's time for you to be a part of the change for someone else. So let me tell you where we're going. We're going to continue doing good in our community and to those around us. We're going to continue abiding because only if we abide can we survive. We are going to continue believing that God is real and present and that he makes a difference in our lives and in the lives of those around us. We're going to continue to be a place for all people. We're going to continue to serve families and individuals because everybody that steps in our door matters. We're going to continue to be present in our community, living outside of these walls where people that need to know Jesus are. We're going to continue to call people to know and to follow Jesus because he changes everything. This is where we're headed. We're going to continue in the ways that have brought us to this place, believing that God has way more in store for us. When God jolted me out of a slumber, He has reminded me these last four months this concept. I have bigger and better dreams for this church, Jordan, than you can even imagine. Will you trust me? Will you keep following Will you allow me to lead, or are you going to try to take the wheel back from me? Ephesians chapter 3 has been a prayer I've used over and over in this place. I love it because Paul understands who God is and how great he is. Ephesians 3 verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. We are going to continue to believe that God can do more than we can think or ask or even imagine. That he has a plan and that he is not finished. So here's where this church is headed. I believe this church will be a place where the long, lonely find belonging. A place where families flourish. A place where the community is welcomed. A place where you play a part and your part matters. A place where lives are changed and a place where changed lives live changed lives. I believe this church will be a place where you are called to live on purpose for a purpose. And I believe that this church will be a place where we have great expectations of our great God. 
friends, this is where we're going. We can look back in the rearview mirror and celebrate where God has brought us. We can look in our present and see the challenges that are upon us. But if we do not grow weary, and if we continue abiding, I believe that we will be a place where every single thing on that list is a reality. Because I believe no matter who walks into this door, we can disciple them and equip them to know and follow Jesus. So friends, here's what I ask of you. Will you journey with us? Will you come with us? I believe my job as pastor is to carry the flag and to lead the way. But I need to be able to look back and see that you're with me. I need to be able to look back and to see that you believe. Because you're not a leader if you're walking alone. And so I'm asking you, will you journey with us? Will you continue to help this place grow into what God wants it to become? And how do you do that? You prioritize your relationship with God. You take serious the God of all creation and that He cares about you. You take serious the reality of heaven and hell with those that you love and you care about. You take serious that giving is an obedience to God. You take serious that attendance to what we are doing matters. Because you may say, well, I don't really even care about going and playing bingo, but what about the relationship you can build at that time? Will you journey with me? Will you go with us on this journey of following Jesus? The slogan I'm using now constantly is this. We are not a church that just tells you about God. We're a church that teaches you to follow Him. We're not a church that's just going to tell you about God. We're going to teach you to know Him and to follow Him. So as we end, this kind of marks our two-year from replant. We replanted two years ago on September 11th. And, And here's what I'm going to tell you guys. I'm done with the word replant. Not that I didn't believe in it, not that I don't like it, all that. I'm done with it. You know why? We're a church. We're a church now. The replant got us to being a church. We were always a church, but we know what we're doing, we think. (laughs) Who knows? Strike that from the record. (laughs) We don't know what we're doing. We know who we're following. So here is the guiding force of what we are doing. Hopefully you all got one of these. If you didn't, Steve Jevons will go out to the foyer and grab some for us. Does anybody need one of these? Did everybody get one as they came in? Yeah, Steve's going to go grab some for us in the foyer and bring those in. Um, Listen, the guiding force of everything that we are and everything that we do is represented in this cup. Jesus, on that same night that he said, abide in me. All right, raise hands. Julia needs some. Carrie and Donna need some. Jace needs some. Uh, We've got on that side as well. Awesome. Steve will come to you as you raise your hand. The Bernals, they're embarrassed, but it's okay. (laughs) Sorry, that's what you get when I look out this way at you. The guiding force of everything that we are, Steve over here on the front row as well. And back there, Bailey, anybody need some? Okay, y'all are okay. Jason, then we've got this back corner on the other side, Steve. Thank you, sir. Right back there. Way to go, Steve. Thanks for jumping in. You play a part, and your part matters. Everything that we're about is summed up in this. It's the guiding force of all that we do. It's what has changed our life. And what I hope changes the life of those that we love and we care about. 
represented in this meal that Jesus introduced for us on that night that he was to be betrayed in the upper room. He said this. He said, this is my body. I invite you to go ahead and open that part. He said, this is my body that is broken for you, that is given for you. The body that stepped down from heaven and took on flesh to endure every bit of slander, mocking, beating, and eventually murder. Jesus says, this is my body that I am giving to you. The body that is broken for you so that you are not broken. The body that is beat up and bleeding out for you. He said, this is my body. Take and eat. And then he raised the cup. And he raised the cup and he said, this is my blood. All of his disciples would know that forgiveness is only found in the blood. But they also would be taught that the blood of bulls and goats do not satisfy forever. But Jesus says, I will give a once and for all offering. I will bleed out my blood for you, to cover you, to wash you, to cleanse you. He said, this is my blood poured out for you, the Lamb of God, the Son of God, coming to save us. And so he passed around the cup, and he said, take and drink of your forgiveness. This church has been in existence for 150 plus years. This church started doing new things two and a half years ago and beyond. And at all points of our history, this, the body and blood of Jesus, has been the guiding force, the grounding feature, and every bit of the message that we have. And it is today, and it is tomorrow, and it will be forever. Because Christ was crucified, and I am a recipient of grace and mercy and forgiveness because of it. Friends, this is your church. This is the church that God has us to be. May we be faithful. May we be obedient. And may we abide in Him. And may we reap whatever He desires us to reap as He works in, through, and around us. Let me pray for us. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for bringing me here to be a part. Thank you for the legacy of membership here that has been faithful in believing that you're not finished. Thank you for the renewed excitement of those in our community that have come to be members and come to be attenders of this place because they see that you're working in it. Thank you for changing hearts, God. Thank you for changing lives, God. Thank you for changing marriages, God. Thank you for giving us hope in storms. Thank you for giving us peace in calamity. Thank you for who you are and who you have been. God, we could not have done this on our own, but you have been present. You have been working. And God, we don't want it to finish. Because God, we know you're not finished. As long as there are dying people, as long as there are lost people, as long as there are people who do not know you and follow you, you are on mission to bring them to understand your love and your mercy, and thank you for allowing us to be a part of your mission. So God, as we celebrate who you are and what you have done, may it remind us and spur us and be catalytic for us to then live this out every day, believing 
that you are working in us, through us, and around us. So God, now as we praise you, may we do it with full voice. May we do it with full belief and full faith because you are good and you are our God. God, thank you for this church. Continue to work in a mighty way in it, through it, and around it. It is in